Yes, uh, yeah. good, good afternoon, Sean. Actually, this mine, the results of the mining audit should have been out much earlier, but a lot of firms were contesting this, so they got delayed to, to, to its release yesterday. It, it looks like survival of the fittest. I mean, if you're in good shape, mm -hmm. you're going to get through the audit. If not, um, uh, the DNR secretary is going to suspend you. My understanding is even those that got suspended have a certain amount of time to reply. Yeah, about to seven DNR, days, I think. Yes, yeah. to the DNR's findings. But um, those that made the cut, they're going to do quite well, especially on, on the nickel side. Okay, so what do you make out of the sector? Like, how would you position yourself? Is mining still a good buy right now, in your opinion? Well... Uh, the mining sector is a small portion of the index, so maybe foreign flows won't really go um, heavily into mining. But um, if you look at the statement er, um, earlier by the DNR, they said about 55% of nickel mm -hmm. um, output was curtailed. If you just look at shipments, nearly 70% of shipments were technically... So it's actually a lot worse than yeah. what they said. Yeah, it, mm -hmm. it's a lot worse, which mm -hmm. makes it a lot better for the nickel miners <laughs> that survive, such as Nickel Asia. Mm -hmm. um, so nickel prices should go up because of that. Um, as you said earlier, also one mine got suspended. That accounts for about, Hinatuan accounts for about 15% yeah. of net income. Okay. So while that's bad news, if nickel prices move up by like 5 6%, that should more than offset the impact okay. of the mine. So, so thank you for explaining that weird irony that has been going on with, <laughs> yeah. the, with nickel prices and nickel stocks. Now, yeah. let's go to individual companies. You mentioned Nickel Asia, of course, the biggest nickel miner. Um, their stock has been doing really well. Uh, which companies are you looking at for like a long-term hold? Okay, um, we, with regard to nickel mining, I mean, Nickel Asia is already the, the creme de la creme. Uh, mm -hmm. It was one of the most efficient refiner, refineries in the world. It's partners with Sumitomo, which is one of the most efficient and also most environmentally friendly miners in the world. Um, so I'm not surprised the stock is up 6%. Nickel Asia accounts for a big chunk already of the remaining yeah, nickel true. supply. So it, it, it's really, it's also the most liquid among all these. So it's the most efficient, the most environment friendly, and also the largest. So. Among the nickel miners, uh, Nickel Asia would be your best bet. I mean, have you actually been to its mines? Um, I went to um, the Taganito one. Mm -hmm. You're going to see that the previous tailing spot is actually a legitimate lake with fish in it. Okay, so they're, like they're you can clean. swim, you can like but, take a boat ride. Well, I did try swimming, but there were fish, but <laughs> okay. it's legitimately clean. Okay, so let's look at the broader index. Um, mm -hmm. Earlier, Phil Equity said that they would would see the index about 8.4 early mm. next year. Yeah. Are you still holding on to that or have you revised? Well, over the long term, um, if you meant our fair value for the index was, is about 7,600. It actually overshot that mark, but mm -hmm. now it's back to our fair value, which is more or less where we think mm -hmm. it should be. So if you have 10% earnings growth next year, that should bring you to about 8,400 next okay, year. Okay, let me ask you this. Are, 24 straight days of outflows, yes. the longest streak dating back to available data since 1999. Yeah. This is kind of freaky. Are you scared because you don't look look it? <laughs> well, uh, well, there, there's support at 7,500. As I said, the fair value 76. Anything below that um, would actually provide an opportunity. 24 straight days of outflows are indeed a bit a bit concerning. Uh, but, you know, it will end at some point. And remember, uh, those 24 straight days have a total of about $25 billion in foreign selling. Mm -hmm. um, and, but someone has to buy that, right? Mm -hmm. So it looks like the locals are strong mm -hmm. enough. Eh? They're, they're the ones buying it. So you think the local funds can manage to offset the outflows from the foreign funds? Well, so far, 7.5 is holding and they're doing a good job. Okay. So Phil Equity... Um, of course, calling 80, 8,400 at the eight, at the end of 2017. Yeah. Okay. So yeah. with the peso weakening also, how does this all play in for you, especially as we approach the last quarter of the year? Where do you see the index at the end of 2016 if you say it's going to be at 8.4 at the end of next year? Well, that, that's hard to say. I mean, mm -hmm. you, anyone who can tell you where the index will be at a certain point in time, uh, um, uh, it's probably kidding. Um, it's really hard to predict where it will be at the end of the year. But uh, normally, 
um, we have seen statistically, we use 29 years of data. The strongest um, times, uh, the strongest months for the index are November, December, and January. And August and September historically are the weakest. Like about 60% of the time, two-thirds of the time, August is a down month. Okay, so, so this is based on trend, going back 29 statistics, years. Statistics, 29 yes, years, August is down. Uh, August is worse than September. September is a little bit bad. October, it starts evening out. November, December, January, we find it um, to be... Um, so will we be seeing the returns then? Yeah, I think um, statistically, again, uh -huh. the, statistics, yes, statistically. the index does well on November, December, and January, which is, you know, just a month away. All right. Thank you very much for your insight, Miguel Agarao from Phil Equity.